Amen. And she would begin to lay hands on me and, and speak into my life and tell me who I was. And that was, amen, the sense for my beginning. My life, listen, y'all, was like Jesus and the Lord's Supper. Listen, Bible readers. Uh, amen. Jesus, the Bible said that, that Jesus took the bread. He blessed the bread. Amen. He then he broke the bread, and then he served the bread. Watch it one more time. He took the bread, he blessed the bread, he broke the bread, and then he served the bread. That's how my life was. Amen. That, that he took me out. Amen. Among my brothers and sisters, I was the first one to accept Christ. Amen. And start walking in the church. He took me out. Some of y'all are wondering what's happening with y'all. Sometimes God has to pull you out in order to bless you. God took me out. Amen. And then he held me up and blessed me and strengthened me and amen called me to the ministry and began sharing things and blessed me and, and amen enabled me to have a calling on my life but you all know what amen as I went on in my life I got hooked up with some of the wrong preachers <sighs> tell somebody we're going to be real today y'all y'all get here Y'all, y'all fool around, play other places. We got, I, you got the real deal, holy feel here, amen. Um, you, I, I got caught up with some of the wrong preachers, and amen. They were my heroes, they were my mentors, and you've got to be careful because, amen. Even if someone is your mentor, if you admire them and if you follow them, not only will you get their gift, you'll get their spirit if you're not careful, mm. amen. So you've got to be careful, amen. Whose spirit you get, and so, amen. Here I found myself going in the wrong direction. I'm found myself dealing with porn and plain, lane and plain and cheating and dealing with, amen, pointing. It's always good to, amen, do like Adam did. Every time I made a mistake, I say it was the woman that you gave me. Amen. And so here I am pointing, but God, amen, took me through the process because after he took me and after he blessed me, watch this, y'all, he broke me before he could serve me. He took me through a making and breaking process and helped me understand that he loved me in the midst of my mess and pulled me out of my mess. And I want you, know, you all to know, amen, in many instances, before God can serve you, he's got to break you. Yeah, he's got to break you to let you know he's in control. He's the one that's running this. And I thank God, amen, for how he took me, amen, and put up with my mess. Amen. I could have been gone a long time ago, but it's the grace of God. Do I have a witness in the house that left me thus far? I love that song Marvin Gaye is singing, but I'm, I'm not sure, amen, if he's singing to his wife or not, because sometimes it seems as if he's not, but, but Marvin Gaye says, I need some love, and, and then, then you know what he says, hey, amen, y'all know what he says, um, when I get that feeling, I need sexual healing. Oh, God, perhaps that is the key to the series that we're dealing with. Uh, what do you do when you get that feeling? Uh, amen. What do you do? How do you handle it? When, if you don't know what to do when you get that feeling, you're going to be in trouble. I wish I had some witnesses. Y'all wouldn't look at me funny if Anthony Weiner came in here and we asked you, Anthony, what do you do uh, when you get that feeling? If Bill Clinton came in here and we brought Monica Lewinsky, uh, we asked him, what do you do when you get that feeling? Uh, if, amen, Arnold Schwarzenegger, when his wife is gone uh, and the waitress is going around cleaning up the house. What do you do uh, when you get that feeling? Uh, I need a little level of, oh God, uh, you need something. Uh, but what Marvin said, watch this y'all, uh, This he said it's something that's good for me. Uh, amen. I had to say, well Marvin, all that is good but but but, but maybe it's not something uh, necessarily that's good for you. Uh, you need to change one word. Uh, maybe it's just good to you. Because I've got about 15 or 20 people in here that knows that everything that's good to you is not good. Come on somebody. It's not good for you. In fact, my key, amen, the key to my breakthrough was learning how to pass up some stuff that I thought was good to me in order to get that thing I knew was good for me. But once I got that thing that was good for me and passed up that thing that was good to me, God used me and brought a blessing through me and then turned around and gave me something that was good for me and allowed her to be good to me. 
Marvin says, I, I'm, 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 I'm feeling blue. Amen. He's dealing with stress and distress and disgruntlement. Amen. I'm, I'm disgruntled. I'm in despair. And when I get that feeling, I need, amen, some healing today. I need some relief and release of sexual healing. But I've come to tell you all, amen, you've got to put this in the right perspective because there's some medications that are like penicillin, amen, and then there's some that's like crack cocaine. Some of them will kill you and the others will curse you. I said that's good, Marvin, but the healing that I received only lasts for a little while and it turned to a whole lot of pain. Do I have a witness in the house? So we got to we got to try to be able to get this. Listen, listen, Amen. I want to introduce this to your series to y'all. First of all, I want to help us understand why are you talking about this, Pastor? Amen. It's needed, y'all. Why in this series? We need some inspiration. Somebody say inspiration. Inspiration, that's good. Amen. We need some inspiration. Amen. In this series, uh, this series is not just for singles. Uh, it's not just for married folk. This series is for everybody. <laughs> it's for everybody. Let me say it like my cousin says. It's for everybody. <laughs> Because it's, it's my, my, my singles, my singles, uh, amen, they, they would suggest to y'all, Pastor, if I just had a good husband or wife, I, if I just had a good husband, listen, I wouldn't cheat no more, I, I wouldn't porn, I wouldn't deal with porn, I wouldn't masturbate, I wouldn't do any of these things. And by the way, on that note, if there's children from eight, y'all should have known this already, if there's children from 11 down, you need to probably send them to the children's church, uh, amen, my ushers will take them if there's any, any that need to go, amen, up till the their age uh, two years old, a amen, that need to go. We're going to amen because this is the real deal. Somebody say the real deal. I got to get some folk healed in here, y'all. Amen. This ain't child's play. I got some. And, and now, and, and some of these Disney channels is kind of rough, too. They probably get, man, God, they, they probably be a little more, man, they getting, they getting kind of deep. I was like, my son, what is that? He said, the, I said, the Disney channel, good. God, what, what kids need to see that? Anyway, God is good. Amen. And so singles are always saying, if I just had them, I wouldn't do this and I wouldn't do that. If I just had someone, amen. I just, Pastor, I just want to be loved and touched so much. Amen. And then my couples come in. When they come in my office, they say, they, 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 <laughs> they come in there talking about, I, I don't want them touching me. I don't, I don't know. I'm just not in the mood no more. She won't give me none. I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, what's I, tell somebody pastor got a hard job. I've got a hard job. My, my job is I've got to try to keep single folk out to bed. If you think that's hard, try to get married folk in the bed. The, the, the problem, y'all, the problem, what we got to understand is the same enemy either way. You need some power either way because the same devil that makes the singles horny when they ought to be holy will make a couple holy when they ought to be. Okay. Bump somebody say he's going to preach today. Tell, tell him he's going to preach. He's going to preach today. I'm not playing. He's going to preach today. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, amen, because Paul says, in whatever state I'm in, I've learned therewith to be content. You're going to need the Holy Ghost power to keep you if you're married or keep you when you're single. Do I have a witness in the house? Either way, you need the Lord, amen, to help you along this journey. Listen, y'all, amen, we need everybody. Amen, this message is for everybody. But not only that, amen, but why? Why are you talking about this, Pastor? Well, not only this, this is for everybody, but I'm, I'm sharing with you because for information. Let me ask you a question. What is, amen, the extent of your sexual education? What is the extent? Amen. I'm not talking about the physical act. Amen. Of how to do that. I know y'all know how to do that thing. I know you know how to do that thing. I know you know how to break somebody off something. I, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what your mama taught or daddy or what the church has taught us. The extension of what the church teaches us for the most part is don't have sex because it's a sin. Amen. And you're going to hell, hell, hell. <laughs> Don't have sex, amen, because if you do, you're going to get pregnant. And some of the old school mamas had you think if you just touch a boy, you can. As soon as you touch him, you can. Man. I just accidentally shook the hand, Pastor. What, amen, you'll get pregnant or, amen, or don't have sex because you'll get a disease. 
And some of these diseases will make you dis-ease for the rest of your life. All of that was good. But what they didn't tell me is that when I had sex, amen, my soul is tied to someone else. What they didn't tell me is the reason why I was laying and playing over here and struggling here is because something had happened way back in the future because my mother was manic depressing and bipolar and there was no nurturing in my life. Amen. I didn't have the nurturing and affection that I needed. And so there I was trying to find love in the wrong places. What they didn't tell us is so many of us have daddy issues because a daddy never spoke into your life and told you about your beauty. Amen. And the first man that came around and said that he loved you, floored you. And then you begin to go from bed to bed trying to find that daddy's affection that you missed all your life. They didn't tell me that this was not just a physical thing. It was a mental thing. James says when lust is conceived in the mind first, it brings forth sin. And when sin is finished, and they didn't tell me that the bed was just a delivery room. It was not, amen, where the birth happened at, that I got pregnant, amen, with lust way over here in my mind. And if this was just the delivery where it had taken place. They did not tell me that the enemy messes with my mind and goes through my ear gate and eye gate and that men, amen, are, are influenced or aroused by sight. Amen. We're bothered by sight. Whereas a woman, amen, is hers, is more, yeah, you like a good looking man, but women are more so like feelings. And that's how I had to learn to guard my eye gate and my ear gate and watch what happens. Watch what I put in my spirit because the devil, oh, y'all don't hear me. That's why y'all, y'all not getting it. That's why when I go to the Lakers games, or when I go see Blake Griffith come down there and do that thing, and it's a family environment. David, I, I got my family, I got my son, mama, we just trying to watch the game and watch them do that thing, and I'm enjoying the game, and all of a sudden, eight, is the, eight of the finest women you ever seen, you're like, come out, all this. All this kind of, and I'm like, shot to take Kata. I can tell you every piece of paper that's on the floor. I can tell you everything around because I'm looking down and I'm looking in because I don't want that in my spirit because it might not affect me right then, but the enemy knows how to press rewind. And he will get you at a certain time. Oh, y'all follow me. I'm affected by sight unlike women who, yeah, y'all like a good looking man. Y'all want a good looking brother. Y'all want somebody fine or cute. But if you treat a woman right, if you, amen, take care of her, if you pray for her children, if you pay the rent, if you treat her nice, she can get past your belly. That, that's why, that's why. That's why you can see a big old fat greasy looking brother have a 